Okay, I'll uh, go ahead and open it up. Frank, on tape, what did you see from the offensive line's performance? I thought we showed some uh, effectiveness in the run game, um, especially early on. Obviously, when, when the game was when the game was uh, close, I thought um, you know we came out in some twelve personnel, and I thought we did a good job in that running both inside zone and outside zone. Had a few other different schemed runs in there that I thought the guys executed well. I thought the backs ran hard behind their pads. I thought the tight ends blocked well. Both of them, particularly Tommy, was very aggressive, did a nice job. It was good to have Ian back in there. Um, uh, so that run game effectiveness is definitely something we'll look to build on. Um, with that said, you, you went under center a few times and were pretty successful. I think it was like five yards a clip. What made you move away from that, and why has that it, it, do you see that becoming a staple uh, from now on? So we have plans going in to do all three um, under center, pistol, and gun. Um, we adapted and adjusted, uh, you know, for different reasons as the game went on. You know, s some things schematically, um, other things just to keep the change up, other things to play off of, other things we either were doing that game or would plan to do off of it, whether it be play action or something like that. Uh, do you anticipate any changes to the staff or the lineup as we get into this week? Have not talked. Uh, no staff changes. Um, have not talked about the lineup. You know, I'll meet with uh, the coaches uh, this afternoon. You know, just that, that evaluation um, is always ongoing. You know, we'll kind of check the injuries uh, here in a couple hours. You know, kind of we always do a, a meeting on the projected inactives, projected depth chart. Um, you know, that's always a Monday afternoon meeting. You said right no there. staff changes, and, and I, I'm, what's your philosophy behind that? Because usually when a team starts off with this record, some fans and, and people from the outside in would want to see a staff change. So why, why have you made that decision not to go that route? I believe in our guys uh, strongly. Um, so players and coaches. And so, um, you know, when it comes to the players, you got 53 players, so sometimes you can, you know, they're all we're all one team. So one guy might play more, one guy might play less. Um, but you believe in all those guys. And when it comes to the coaching staff, you know, everybody has you got one per position. So, um, you know, feel feel great about the staff. Um, you know, we have to. You know, we're always looking to get better. Every coach, starting with me, um, finding ways to get better. Did you right. learn any? With that said, I'm sorry to cut you off. Did you learn anything with Marcus last year that maybe you've taken into these first few games with that kind of situation in mind? Um, fair question. Not sure I'm prepared to answer that. You know, like, um, yeah, you know, my thoughts, you know, this year are, hey, I got, I got belief in our guys. Um, you know, be patient, trust your guys. Um, I think that's the biggest thing. You know, um, you hired the people that you hired for a reason. Um, you've seen evidence of good stuff. Stick with it. Um, stick with it and be patient right. and believe. With the offensive struggles over the last three or four weeks, have you given any thought to bumping somebody like Thomas or, or Josh upstairs? Um, no. Um, you know, we have uh, Parks Frazier's upstairs, you know, Parks, you know, guys will tell you is extremely bright. He's, you know, he's in a quarterback room all the time. So, um, you know, really, really think for right now, that's, that's the best thing. I like our operation. You know, I think our operation on game day has been really good, to be honest with you, as far as coaches communication, as far as, um, the th you know, the things that we're talking about. Um, I think that part of it's been good. Have you had your weekly meeting with uh, David Tepper yet? No, no. I mean, right, the normal, our normal, my normal Monday schedule is morning with the players and coaches, and then usually it's not always the same, but um, typically it's Monday afternoon, Tuesday. Sometime it varies week to week. Frank, you touched on the effectiveness of the O line specific to the run game. Looking at even sacks yesterday, what did you see in terms of what wasn't working or what may be the root cause? Um, you know, the sacks that we gave up. Uh, a couple of them were just their players winning one-on-one -on -one matchups. Um, you know, th and as we said, they have a couple. Uh, you know, Micah Parsons is, a, is an elite player, and he won a, he won a couple matchups. 
there were a couple times where we had something, you know, double team scheduled on one, and we didn't kind of get that executed quite right. Uh, there was another one where, um, you know, we had a protection call that that went from one thing to another, and probably needed to be in the first one rather than the second one, so we didn't quite get what we wanted. Um, so, and then at the end of the day. You know, as, as a play caller, you always want to try to protect the guys too. Like late in the game, we got a bunch of sacks late in the game. I, I hate getting sacks anytime, but I hate getting sacks late in the game that is not a close, you know, that's that's not close because it reflects very poorly, you know, on the offensive line. And, you know, so as a play caller, when you get late in the game like that, you want to be smart about it. And we had the, the one series where we had three sacks in a row. Where there was 12 minutes to go in the game, it was 30 to 10, and uh, you know there was still just enough time in the game where I felt like I had to be aggressive and call passes down the field to see what we could get. It just it was unfortunate we got three consecutive sacks on those three plays, um, but we need to we need to as a group, uh, players and coaches do better in that regard. Any consideration for like giving Bryce a week to sit back and watch, let Dalton play to just for a pause to kind of catch his breath and figure out what's going on here? Yeah, no consideration to that. Um, you know, looking back on this tape, um, you know, he did a lot of good things. Um, you know, it's important for him and for us. He's our leader. He's our leader on offense, and he's going he's gonna to help us get to where we want to go. And on the Tepper thing, um, the report's out there that you're on the hot seat right now. Um, that can become a distraction to a locker room, to you doing your job. What, where do you stand on that? Is that or becoming a distraction? Um, no, I just focused on getting ready for Tennessee. Um, focused on today, getting into that film, uh, learn from it, learn how we can coach it better, play it better, then quickly get your ears, uh, your eyes and ears, and everything out towards your next opponent. Uh, we talk about it in there all the time. This is a week to week league, and. Uh, we all know what we sign up for when we get in this business. So I'm, 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 you know, I'm comfortable with that. Just keep working, put put your head down, and focus on your work. Um, so I don't think that's not a distraction. Frank, during the week, it seems like it is a mellow environment in the locker room. Everybody's getting along. There is like a shared vision. But do you think at some point there it becomes like it's too comfortable? You talk about the the healthy you know, kind of tension. Do you think there needs to be more tension at one and nine? Um, I don't. I think, uh, listen, I think coaches and players, um, there's a lot of honest talk when we turn on the film, and there's a lot of hard coaching, and there's a lot of uh, player to player, you know. And honestly, we, get, we start watching a tape, and before we can hold a player accountable, they're holding themselves accountable. Um, you know, I'll show a tape and I'm ready to, you know, I'm getting ready to make some corrections. And before I can even say them, the guys are standing up and call, that's my, that's on me, coach. That's, you know, and he's telling the whole room, that's on me. I can, I got to do better there. You know, as coaches, we're, hey, I got to do a better job of putting you guys in position on this play right here. I got to, we got to coach that better. You know, that little aspect of that play, that could have been coached better. Um, that's pretty dynamic and in a good way. Um, because the guys want to win. The guys are uh, high character guys willing to take accountability. So I think there's, I think we have the right amount of healthy tension. Frank, you, last week, you discussed a rotation at left guard, but um, snap counts show that you've played the entire, you stayed, played the starting lineup the entire game. Yeah. Uh, what was your reasoning and was there any consideration to switch up personnel? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, I, in game, you know, we I always talk with Campy beforehand. Hey, here's a general plan, and you know, we had talked about po possible rotation. Um, there was at one point we were going to make a rotation, and then it got later in the game and in the fourth quarter. Um, and so, in game like that, I just kind of leave it up to the position coaches. We we talk beforehand, um, spell it out clearly what we're looking for, and then because they're have a feel. They're with the guys on the side. They kind of know. And a lot of times, like for example, one of the guys will come up and say, hey, I'm going to make this switch, you know, you know, and I'll give them the thumb, you know, the thumbs up. So uh, that's always kind of a week to week thing. Is Chandler going to still be the starter there? Uh, we haven't talked about that yet. 
from the outside looking in, we don't know all the blocking protections. I know critics are going to weigh in on what they see with their eyes. From an interior standpoint, where are you at with those three players? Um, listen, I, I love our group. I love our group. And, um, you know, we're just going to continue. I think they, I, and I love Campy and Coogs as the coaches. Um, you know, I think that group is, uh, you know, like I said, we made some good progress in the run game. We just need to translate that to pass protection and find a way to be better pass protectors. So uh, those interior guys did a great job in the run game. Uh, now we just got to get things a little tightened up in the pass game. While the yeah. game was still competitive, there were quite a few penalties that, that played the team. When you're looking at tape, what do you see there? Yeah, I mean, you know, there was a, it was a, there was a couple bad sequences, and as you said, there, you know we're you know looking at that tape. I don't know I mentioned this last night, but looking at it again today, it, it, it hurt just as bad today. Where there's one point you turn the film on, and there's 34 seconds to go in the third quarter, so we're almost in the fourth quarter. The score 17 to 10, and it's they got the ball, and it's third and five. You know, so we make that we make a stop right there, and they're punting to us, and we got the ball. You know going to try to tie the game. And, um, you know, so the point of that answering your question is we had all those penalties earlier on more than we normally have. And we're still at a seven point game at the, at the end of the third quarter with an opportunity to be getting the ball and going and scoring to, to win, you know, to win the game. But we just we couldn't get off the field at that one point. Defense has been playing great the whole year. We did need to stop right there. Um, weren't able to get it. Um, so Bad news on the penalties. Good news was it was we were overcoming that to be in a position to get back in that game and tie that game up. Let's wrap up with David. You, you love your guys up front on your offensive line. I was curious. The, the pass protection has been an issue all year. What did you see during your evaluation during the offseason of this group that made you believe they can be good pass protectors? I mean, I think the main thing in the evaluation uh, – coming in when you were looking at the tape from last year, what stuck out was the run game. You know, there's no question about that. We all know that. We all know what this team did um, in the second half of the season, um, playing the brand of football that they were playing. It wasn't a bunch of drop back passes, you know, so not as much evidence for that for, hey, you get a, you know, you get a number, you know, you get Bryce Young and you're going to spread it out and, you know, kind of do different things, not play the same brand that we played last year here. Um, but what I saw, there was good evidence. It was just a different style, a different brand of offense. Frank, is um, Austin okay? We saw him leave the game briefly. Yeah, he, he finished the game. We're going to have to see, you know, see how he does here, you know, getting things checked out. But he did finish the game. Was that his surgically repaired knee? Or? Uh, it was.